Hi everyone, thanks for joining the Lucy Power Perspective. I'm Lucy Power, Australia's number one fitness escort, porn star and content creator. So um, today's episode is going to be uh, me discussing a couple of client stories again. Um, I got a lot of positive feedback from the uh, first lot that I did. Uh, people are always asking me about the sorts of clients that I get and um, the situations that I get myself into and I guess it um, makes for good viewing. Um, some of the stories are quite interesting and, and very different but, but mostly, um, you know, 90% of my clients are just your average sort of person looking for some intimacy. So, um, but I always remember a couple that it was a little bit out there, a little bit different. So the first one that I want to talk about is probably, um, it, it could be a little bit helpful for newbies wanting to get into the industry or wanting to know about, um, you know, potential situations that aren't going to be ideal because this is one of my first clients. And um, I've always said that I've, I've never had any bad experiences with clients. I've been very fortunate. Um, but that doesn't mean that uh, people haven't tried to either take advantage of me um, or the situation that I'm in. So um, this one client is um, one of the first ones that I had and I probably had my profile up for a week um, and I think this person um, had probably seen other escorts before and knew that I was new because he hadn't seen my profile before so probably knew that he could take try and take advantage of me and my situation and I didn't really have any mentors and didn't know much about the industry at the time so I um, was sort of going in blindly um, so when I when this person requested um, I think a couple of hours I was really excited because it was one of my first clients and I thought wow I'm gonna earn lots of money and I was really nervous and um, he came across as very articulate in his communication and um, so and he was very pleasant and I thought it would just be fine I went to his house it was a nice big house in a really good area of Brisbane and he was very very friendly with me um, our interactions were fine um, at that stage I didn't really know how much personal information that I should give or um, you know how lenient I could be with the time I guess I just hadn't really thought about that before so what happened was he was like a high profile lawyer in um, Brisbane and um, he was just very friendly he offered food and we just sat down for a chat and he clearly was trying to get to know me personally a little bit and I probably gave out a little bit too much information not like my address or anything like that but um more than I would give upon reflection I wouldn't do that again um so he fed me and he told me about his situation so I guess he was trying to get some sympathy from me as well he said look we're probably not even going to um, have sex because I can hardly get it up because I'm an old guy now and I just really want your company and maybe we could fall around a little bit but um, I doubt very much that we're going to have sex and I'm like okay fine whatever you've paid me for that and if we don't do that that's fine but if we do that's fine um, so uh, he was going on about how much money he had and all this sort of stuff and um, we did eventually make it to the bedroom and the time was really ticking on and I had about 10 minutes left and so I just thought well, maybe this is going to be quick and um, like it was a, just a normal intimate situation um, but definitely did continue on to sex or what we could do of it and but it was going over time and I was trying to very kindly say look we've gone over time and I really do need to go I always had in my mind that my backup plan would be I've got another client so I can't go over time um, and he begged, he's like, oh, look, I really, I can't believe I found this connection with you. Uh, you make me feel absolutely amazing. I've never um, felt this way with anyone before. <laughs> when people say that, it's usually a lie. Um, but he was being very kind about the whole situation. And I said, well, you know, um, it's going to cost this much. And he goes, okay, well, I've only got this much in cash. And he opened up his drawer and he showed me his cash. He goes, I can give you this, but I would really like you to stay like an extra three hours. And then I will pay you the rest later and I'm like well I don't know how that's going to work I would have to come back over and pick up the cash and he goes are you okay with that and just being put on the spot in that situation being such a newbie was um 
I, I felt very uncomfortable, but I was also quite excited about the money and he was, he was friendly at the time and, and I thought, okay, I'll trust him. And so I said, okay. And we got to like this extra time and I said, I really do have to go now, it's getting late. Um, I just said that I pretended that I was texting my next client um, that I couldn't make it and uh, and we continued and everything was fine and I left feeling safe and comfortable um, and I went home and I messaged him the next day and that's when the issues started happening. He kept putting me off and he kept saying, oh yes, darling, I totally, I just can't get to the bank right now. I'm a little bit busy, but I will get back to you and all this sort of stuff. Um, so... I was pretty pushy though. Um, I didn't let it go, and but it took me a good full week of daily text messaging and um, not threats, but saying that I would come to the house and knock on his door and and ask for the money um, because that's what he owed me. And uh, in the end, he was like, like I think like on day seven, he goes, okay, I have it for you now. You can come by, and um, I can't remember. He may have invited me in then, but I didn't. And he gave me the money and I left. So that is a lesson learned. Um, I've learned that quickly. Um, not to give anyone any extra time unless they pay you up front um, because you can get ripped off. So that was one client, one of my very first clients. And um, what was interesting about that booking, another thing that was interesting about that booking is he said his um, mother was like in another room asleep, which was a bit strange. Um, but that she was, um, you know, on a ventilator or something like that. <laughs> it was a bit weird. And she couldn't hear us. Um, but we had to keep it down. And then um, we sat there and he showed me through the um, the escorting uh, website that I used to advertise myself. We looked through it together and he showed me other girls on the site that were popular, girls he'd seen, girls that were lying about their age, um, you know, we were talking about how much they were charging and how much I should charge and the sort of image that I was um, presenting, he said, was uh, a new thing because um, no one had really done the fitness modelling thing before and uh, and with the tattoos and everything. And he goes, so make sure we keep going to the gym and, and keep pushing that. Um, and, and But we sat there for like a good half an hour scrolling through images of women um, of women he'd seen. And that's when I knew straight away that he'd obviously come across my profile and was, you know, knew that I was new and trying to take advantage of the situation. Um, so that was, that was one client, which was rather interesting. Um, another one which I love, to t I love, well, I don't say I love to talk about it like I've told everyone about it because I don't always tell people about these things, but um, one of my favourite clients and most fun and interesting but quite intense is uh, he was the, the CEO of um, a big food company here in Brisbane but just on contract and so he was being put up in a really nice apartment in a nice location and because he was the boss, he, um, he, he needed release basically and he wanted to see me as sort of like a dominatrix because he had this fetish for women with muscles in lingerie and he liked to be pegged and he said that he he just liked um pegging pegging is like me with a strap on giving them anal sex he says he just liked it and he liked the thought of being um, overpowered by a woman and taken uh, and dominated basically because he was the dominant one in his work role every single day and he worked really hard and he just needed to really let go. And so that was his thing and I, and I really liked doing that for him because that's why I do what I do. I, um, I'm a people pleaser and I like to make people happy and um, that's why I'm okay and quite open-minded and willing to explore different things like that. Um, we did lots of fun things like um, uh, he would like fist me on the balcony, but we'd be very discreet about it. And we would have a chat and um, talk about um, business and things like that, which is something that I'm also very interested in. He would also show me pictures of other women that uh, appealed to him. And, um, and yeah, so we would do that and uh, drink wine when I used to drink and, and then... Um, uh, I don't. I don't even know. I can't even remember if we actually had regular, um, like, penis vagina sex. I think it was always just me pegging him, which was uh, quite.
great fun. And now his situation, he was like, I would like to see you regularly, but would you be willing to drop your rate if I saw you once a week? And this was another, another situation where someone was trying to cut down my price. And it's very frustrating, especially for someone new. Um, I didn't really know what to do or say in that sort of situation. And I said, well, yes, if, if, if you're going to see me regularly, I will. I'd be willing to do it. But it never ended up happening. So... He, he promised once a week, but it would be like, it was like that week and then, then the week after, but then he'd skip two weeks because he'd say, oh, he was sick or he couldn't because he had to go travel into Staith and, and then he just eventually dwindled off. Um, he would also talk about other escorts that he had seen and uh, would, I don't know, try to see if I would um, meet with them or um, talk about them if I knew them and I don't like doing things like that. I, I mean... Doing doubles is fine, that's good fun, but um, trying to talk about another escort with a client who may have seen them, um, I just don't think it's uh, necessary. But anyway, that's another interesting client, um, the pegging CEO. <laughs> so we have the, uh, the rip-off lawyer and the pegging CEO, both very interesting and lessons learned. Um, so today's episode is just a quick one. I just wanted to um, give you a couple of interesting client stories since you liked it so much last time. Um, I didn't even write this down. I um, just noted lawyer and uh, picking CEO and thought I would wing it a little bit um, and try to just remember it. If you have any questions or comments or if you liked these stories, just like this post, share it, talk about it and um yeah, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. This is Lucy Power and you just watched the Lucy Power Perspective. Thank you for watching and um, listening if, this, if you're listening to it on the podcast. Okay, ciao.